really, really, I'm so happy that you asked me to invite, invited me to talk about Hala Gorani. Hala is not only a friend and a colleague, we... Uh, Hala, Hala and I worked together briefly in CNN, of course, she's not only an anchor and a journalist, war reporter, but also Hala reached a stage where she had her own program, the Hala Gorani on CNN. It's quite an establishment. <laughs> Hala is not only pretty, very pretty, but funny and sweet and kind and a very good friend. And she has the courage, had the courage to actually leave CNN and embark on a completely new thing, a new career which is to be just a writer and discover also probably more things than she is currently doing. Very soon we're going to have a book by Hala and she's going to write about her life and I'm really looking forward to reading this book, Hala. I, uh, myself, I'm thinking maybe in the next hundred years I'll write such a book, but uh, it's, I, I wrote one called Militia State, it's really frightening. Uh, but yes, I mean, really, it's, it's great to be here in, in the room with so many lovely and good friends. May I invite you, Hala, and um, I was supposed to be here with Mr. Sadiqi. I, I am here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I didn't see you. Sorry. Hala. Sorry. This Arab-American daughter of Syrian parents raised on three continents and three languages would one day have her own show on this network. At some point you realize your difference is in fact your biggest strength. What is Afghanistan going to look like in six months, a year or so, when they're taking districts? Little girls wearing nothing but plastic flip-flops, so traumatized that they had lost their voice. I think that you need that daily appointment with viewers around the world to try and sort through the news of the day. How do I put it all in context? That's because people want to live as normal a life and as dignified We don't life. know where the story will take us. A familiar place or an unexpected path. <laughs> Journalism is a passion. You do it because you can't imagine doing anything else. You do it because you fundamentally believe you can bring important stories to readers or viewers and perhaps even change some perceptions along the way. On a really good day, and this is a 20-year career here that I'm considering, you come close to making a difference. Educating younger people especially, continuing to raise awareness that disinformation and fake news is toxic and poisonous to our democracies and to our public conversation. The Russians are starting to use crude yeah. uh, aerial bombardments on clearly uh, marked civilian targets. I should, I should leave my job more often. <laughs> this is so incredibly flattering and humbling and such an honor, an absolute honor. Ricardo Karam, the board of Takreem, all of you, thank you so much for thinking of me and honoring me in this way. Um, as I watch this retrospective, and Raymond was saying it, it's kind of, you know, taking me back a little bit, but... Um, I meant what I said when I left uh, CNN last year. Um, I am the daughter of Syrian parents from Aleppo, born in the U.S., and I started my career when there were so few women, or men for that matter, 
of Middle Eastern backgrounds that, that really I could count them on, 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 the, on the fingers of one hand. There was Christiane Amanpour and maybe a couple of others. Now there's more of us, but I never took for granted the privilege that it was, the privilege of a lifetime to be able to report on the news, bring it to the world. And I know how so many of you in the Middle East looked to me, and so many of you have often said, we're proud that an Arab woman has made it this far. And I have to say, I... <laughs> To this, to this day, to this day when I hear that, we are proud of you, it warms my heart. And maybe you can hear how emotional it still makes me. You said I was courageous to leave CNN. I'm not going to disagree with you, because sometimes when you look on the screen and you think, well, you have your show, why? Sometimes in life, there's a season for everything. There's a season for anchoring a daily program, and sometimes there's another season that comes up you know, sometimes unexpectedly, COVID maybe pushed us along a little bit more, where I thought I really need to put all this on paper. I'm still a journalist, but I'll be doing this in very, very different ways in the future. I'll still go to the Middle East. I will still be proud to come from this region and hopefully make you proud as well as I continue in this career and down this path. And my book will come out next year. It talks a lot about identity, about the Arab world, about where our countries are right now, about some of the lost potential, and also some of the greatness that lies in our culture and in our bonds to each other. Thank you again so much, Ricardo and Tech Green. An absolute honor.